Hello, welcome to Scratch 3D Printing. This video, I will show you internal bridging from Orca Slicer and why I love using Orca Slicer. Firstly, I will talk about what is internal bridging. I will show you my setting on Orca Slicer, so stay tuned for it. Let's scratch today's topic. So, what is this feature, internal bridging? Well, it's a feature that Orca Slicer just recently put into their slicer course right so if you're printing something that is curved like something like curvy like this it will just generate as normal like you just print layer by layer wall by wall line by line it's just gonna do that it's gonna print the outer layers in the layers and fill and that is pretty much it without the internal bridging well what is that well internal bridging is it's exactly what it is it's bridging inside the parts so imagine you have a printed part something like this and across here it's gonna bridge from side to side it's basically that but not on the outside it's on the inside of the infill i will show you in work a slicer right now the settings that i use to achieve this amazing print okay we are in work a slicer right now and i printed these two piece part that i model on fusion 360 i printed these two parts at the same time but one of them has the internal bridging and one of them does not have that's the reason why I love Orca Slicer is that if you didn't know this, which I did not know, I just found this out recently. You can go right here. It says global and objects. You can click on objects and then you can select individual pieces. It does not have all the settings, but it has most of the settings that it's very useful. So the first one is the one that's printing normally, but the second one as you can see, it has a lock right here. I modify it from here. So if we go to quality, we scroll all the way down into bridging. I'm going to zoom in over here. We go right here. Don't filter out small internal bridge. It's in the beta phase, but it's actually working really nicely. So I put it to no filtering. If you want to read all of that, you can go ahead and read it. It's in work as But basically, no filtering is it does not filter out any internal bridging it does all of it i will show you in the g code right now i just slice these two model and let's take a look at this if we look closely at this first model right here which doesn't have the internal bridging it has a little teeny tiny right there that's the internal bridging but if we go up by a layer there's none now that's just a normal layer and then we just go up it has a teeny tiny extra layer right there to help the outer layers to um, build that curve so if we go up it's just gonna look like that right go very fast yeah it just looks like that but if we go to the second model look at how much internal bridging we are getting right here on the second model we have these extra bridging inside of the model if we go up there's more 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 on every single step of the way that right there is the most curve of this part so it has the most internal bridging and if we keep going up 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 it has that supports all the way until it's basically there's no curve anymore <laughs> because from this point onward it's going to print really well and if you look down here right the top layer or this gap is huge and then it gets smaller 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 and then once it get to this point right here it doesn't need the internal bridging anymore well you might ask does that cost more material well let's take a look so i'm gonna delete this one we're gonna slice it it says that it costs about 9.89 grams of filament so let's do the other one let's slice the plate and if we look up here now it says that it's going to use 11.03 gram so about two extra grams of filament for that internal bridging you might be like oh that's two extra grams uh, i don't want to waste that i'm just going to print normally but wait until you see the results let me tell you that two extra gram is going to change the piece that you're printing to another whole level so enough with the orca slicer i will show you the part right now so yeah as you just saw an orca slicer that's how the internal bridging works. I'll show you the part right now. I print them in green. Oh my gosh, the light behind is too bright. Okay, there we go. Can you guess which is which? Yep. This one is the one that doesn't have the internal bridging. This one is the one that has the internal bridging. Yes, you can see that there's still like a teeny tiny defect right there, but it's so much way better than this one this one has a huge one basically from this point all the way till there it has the defect there or the it just does not print that well but this one it prints so well on the bottom of this layer it's just that this part right here is very very curvy well this curve is a 45 degree angle curve and it looks like 
about right there that's the most curved part of this piece it's only this teeny tiny portion that has the defect on it the other one has a huge defect and you can see that this piece prints so much better by doing this on Orca Slicer it shows the flow rate of each layer more differently than this one if you can see right there no this is not working the light is way too bright yeah, if you can see right there, I hope you can see, it's about where that defect is. At the bottom portion, it's a lot brighter. At the top portion, it's a lot darker. Why is that? Because for this bottom portion, you can see that it, there's no curve. It's only straight lines. So at that portion, it prints super fast. But then when it gets to the curved part, it prints slower. But it's very consistent throughout the whole print. The one that has the internal bridging here, when I look at Orca Slicer, I see that the bottom portion here where there's no curve it has a consistent flow rate but as it goes through here where it gets more curved it slows down more where the curve is less it speed up again so let's say the color scheme red is fast blue is slow so this part is red and then it gets kind of orangish which is in the middle then it gets blue then it gets back to red and it just keep going from that point on so if you look very closely on the side there's some teeny tiny ringy because I print at 300 millimeters per second on the inner wall and outer wall but it still looks really good it's just that you have to sacrifice the color a little bit because of the speed and the flow rate that it's printing at the bottom portion it's printing at faster speed higher flow rate and it's slowing down a little bit for the other parts like I said at the bottom it prints a fast speed and then when it gets to the curved portion it prints slower speed and at a constant flow rate but i think if i do more um, customization or just do more tweaking in the slicer i will it would definitely get so much better it would just flow the flow rate and the speed would just be consistent throughout the whole print yeah like i said i don't want to mess around with these way way too much because like most of the people out there are not gonna mess with these that much because People are just lazy, right? <laughs> you just want to click and then print. So this is just basically checking a box and then just print. It's not like going to very teeny tiny details of the prints to get exactly what you want. Most of people just want to 3D model, put it into a slicer, and then just click print. Check, check, check all the box they want and then just print. They don't want to tweak like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, but they don't want to do that. They just want to click and print. And from Walgar Slicer's default value, it turns out really nicely that is it with this video of me testing the internal bridging and yeah it turns out really nicely this makes me want to print more stuff with curve and stuff like that thank you so much for watching and as always keep on 3d printing and thank you to all my patreon members for supporting this channel